the Golden Goose. There were once three brothers who were very different from each other. The eldest was smart, the second eldest was strong, and the youngest was uh, Peter. Everyone thought that Peter was a fool. His mother sighed, whatever it shall become of him. His brothers sniggered, there's always a job as a village idiot. But Peter had a good heart and a twinkle in his eye. One day, the smart son was sent out to cut wood for the fire. So his mother packed him a large and delicious lunch. As he entered the forest, a little old man appeared. Good day, Dad. Can you spare me a bite to eat? I'm terribly hungry. But the boy was far too clever to share. If I give you any, there won't be as much for me. Be off. The eldest son started to cut down a tree, but on his first blow, the axe glanced and hit his leg. He ran home howling and vowed that woodcutting was far too dangerous for someone of his intelligence. Next morning, the strong son strode into the forest, also with a tasty lunch his mother had packed. Once again, the little old man appeared. I'm so very hungry. Can you spare me a morsel of food, lad? The boy just laughed. What do you take me for? Get your own lunch, Grandpa. Then, as he began to chop wood, the axe bounced back and hit him on the head. He stumbled home in a daze, telling everyone he was much too strong to waste time on stupid things like tree felling. The next morning, Peter was sent into the forest. For his lunch, his mother had packed only a few crusts of stale bread. Once more, the little man appeared. Can you spare me a bite to eat, lad? Peter didn't mind. Well, it isn't much, but I'm happy to share it. As soon as the old man touched the food, it turned into a magnificent feast with plenty for both of them. Will you look at that? This lunch isn't half bad, is it? When they'd eaten their fill, the old man said, Since you were so kind, I'll return the favour. Cut down that old tree and you'll find something very special underneath. And with that, he vanished. Peter set to work and chopped vigorously. Soon the old tree fell. To his astonishment, there, in a hollow, under the roots, he found a goose with feathers of purest gold. Now, there's something you don't see every day. With the golden goose tucked under one arm, Peter headed for the city. But along the way, he stopped at an inn. The innkeeper had three daughters, and when they saw the goose, they just had to have a golden feather for themselves. The eldest daughter snuck up behind Peter and reached out to pluck a feather. But as soon as she touched the goose, she was stuck fast. No matter how much she struggled, she couldn't let go. Her sisters tried to pull her free, but when they touched her, they were stuck too. Peter left the inn and went on his way, whistling cheerily, taking no notice of the three girls trailing along behind him. They passed a church where the parson spotted them. Girls, girls, you should be ashamed of yourselves running after a young man like that. The parson tried to pull the girls away, but the moment he touched them, he was stuck as well. The church clerk saw the parson and could hardly believe his eyes. Your reverence, why are you playing such childish games? The clerk grabbed the parson, and of course, he couldn't let go either. Finally, two passing laborers tried to help. But they too were forced to join the procession. Still, Peter kept whistling, oblivious to the seven people being dragged with him towards the city. Now, in that city lived a princess who took life so seriously that she hardly ever smiled and never, ever laughed. Her father, the king, had announced that any man who was able to make her laugh should have her for his wife. The princess was out on the balcony when Peter arrived. She stared, astonished to see the strange procession. Peter looked up and smiled. Lovely day for a stroll, isn't it, your highness? The princess looked into his twinkling eyes and started to smile. Then she giggled. <laughs> and soon she burst into long, loud laughter. <laughs> Peter married the princess the very next day. And, as people do when they share a sense of humor, they live merrily ever after.